Thank you for trying financetrainingcourse.com, an online collection of risk, puzzle, treasury and portfolio management resources created by risk and treasury professionals. Moving on, what we've done is we've done a quick review of some of the related definitions that we use in building an ALM model. Now let's talk about what is required in actually building an ALM model. The first piece obviously is the business model of the bank in question and the business model of the bank in question starts off with the fact that the bank goes out and raises deposits and equity and then lends to creditors in the form of assets that are primarily um, that are primarily uh, loans and advances. Now the, the fundamental step here is that as long as you can borrow at 8% and lend at 16% and make sure that your expenses are within the spread, make sure that your credit provisioning, your defaults are within the spread, you should make money. The question that banks ask themselves is that even though if I start at 8% and uh, start at 8% for, for, for my cost of borrowing and 16% for my cost of assets, uh, for the amount or the return that I earn on my assets, what are the risks? You know, the first risk is that the rate on deposits may rise faster than the rate on liabilities. So that's risk number one. Uh, interest rate movement is risk number one. The second risk is that um, while rates might move, the, the shape of the curve, the fact that uh, my, my spread of 8% may reduce. The third is that I may actually have defaults on the portfolio which may further reduce the interest rate spread that I'm earning, not because interest rates have moved, but have moved, but simply because my portfolio has a higher uh, rate of default than the expectation that I started my numbers with. Thank you for trying financetrainingcourse.com, an online collection of risk, puzzle, treasury and portfolio management resources created by risk and treasury professionals.